Now, you know, if you're going to invest in something, invest in something you can, like, I'll buy these, um, repair them, and then sell them and keep the best one. Right. Uh, and that's what you do. Same with this. Uh, there's a bag of, of uh, parts underneath the table. So uh, these, all you do is uh, get a piece of sheet brass, uh, take this off and trace it, cut it out and make your own. Um, the screws you can pick up at a, the, the old timey hardware stores. Uh -huh. And then what you do is you just use the slotted round head screws, file them off, and they look exactly like the screw that's in there now. <laughs> Okay, so I mean, uh, the spring is the coil spring that's in the top of an old lawnmower. Okay. And then all you do is um, make a jig, uh, uh, put a nail in, heat the back end of the spring. Try not to get it red hot, <laughs> enough that it'll bend. And then make your spring, and then file it to the size you need because all these springs are different sizes. And that's all you have to do. And um, uh, I, every so often, a buddy will bring one down. You know, he's going to make. Uh, we made two or three horn ones uh -huh. where we made a, just a class body, and then put this um, call it or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's what this screws into. Okay. So you make that. Um, set it into the horn, and if you set it into the horn, you, you don't even have to screw it in. You can actually, so it just fits in the tip of the horn. Okay. You heat the horn, and it expands, and you just tap it in with a uh, wood mallet. And then it'll compress. When it chills, it'll yeah. yeah, and then it fits right on. And then uh, it, it makes a noise. You can. There's other ways to take care of that problem. But, um, then you can put this spot right on your horn, and uh, you, you have a, a horn shot snake. Nobody else has. Right. There's, I think there's only four or five guys that have them. And uh, they look at my stuff. And it's it's not even as pretty as this. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, I tell him, I said, you know, if you think you're doing something new, give me a day. I'll yeah. find ten pictures of it on the internet. Oh yeah. It's been done a hundred years. Yeah. For two hundred years. There's nothing new under the sun. No, there isn't. And, and a lot of the guys say that I invented stuff, and I haven't invented a damn thing. It's 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 out there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, 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 we were talking about. Uh, uh, I, I made a horn pillow window. And the one guy said, what do you mean? I said, you know, the, the double pane window. He goes, yeah. I said, I, I made one of those out of horn. He goes, why would you do that? I said, well, I just made it small and I made a snuff box on it. Okay. And after I had I molded the, the, the uh, back out of it and the top, um, they slide together. And then all you can either pin it or just uh, blow the bead of glue in there, and it'll never come apart. And then when you make when you make the bottom, it's a big U shaped piece of horn, kind of a flat piece of horn. And then the top is um, another big piece of horn, but in the top of that, you put in. A door, a trap door, in the top. and then you slide the whole thing together, four drops of glue, and it's done. And the one fellow said that he, he said it can't be that easy. It has to be hard. I didn't know it's really not that hard. Yeah. He said, if, if, they, if it was that hard, they would have never done it. Yeah. So we were talking. I said, now the hard part comes in. He goes, what's that? He said, I told him. I said, oh, I said, um, the little door that I'm going to put in. I said, I can make it slide. It's really not that hard to do. It's really easy to do. Uh, I said, but I, said, I want it to pop up. I don't want to have to stick my thumbnail under it to pop it up. Right. I said, so I'm going to make put a spring in there. And I'll, I'll do a, a door clasp. Just push them. So when you lift the door clasp off, the spring will pop the lid off so I can reach right in. And then when I close it, all I do is push down and it'll push the clasp back. And he, he was like, well, they never had anything like that. And I said, well, actually, yeah, that's right up the idea to do it. Yeah. And all the spring is is one of these. Uh huh. And then um, what it is is there's a, um, a loop on the end and you put a pin through the side of the box. And that holds that down. And when you push the lid down, 
it compresses the spring, and when you put the, the latch over the top of it, that's what holds it closed. Huh. So when you flip the latch, the, the door pops open. You don't have to do anything. Still visit them. Yeah. Like and, a um, there's a couple of patch boxes on right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I I I told them. I said, you, you guys think I'm making this up? It's all out there. Yeah. It really is. I said, you just have to spend a little more time looking for it. Yeah. I mean, they were industrious. Oh. When you look at, well, the first one is from match lock to a dog lock. Mm -hmm. Okay. I own one of these. Okay. And I made my, uh, that, that flat Jamestown flask is what I use with it. And I have a, what they call a scallop bag, which is a cutout bag. It's real pretty. But, come on. Um, I was doing, uh, when they were doing pole burns, the, they were doing all the, the stuff. I was looking through the French archives and uh, it's somewhere here. I probably moved it. Dang it. This is the this is all the pole burn stuff, but okay. there is a um, I probably moved it from here. There it is. Just on parts alone. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is the display they have in the museum uh, museum in France. Oh wow. Yeah, it's it's a military museum for all the guns and, and all the accoutrements. So huh. yeah, but I had different. Um, um, I, I actually weeded a lot down because this will only hold so many photographs. Yeah. And uh, uh, but uh, just on parts, I think there were forty or fifty different. Things. It was it was amazing. Yeah. And some of the stuff made no sense when you looked at it. You're like, okay, okay that's just a bunch of pins. Yeah. Yeah, but they're specifically the type of pin you need. Right. So so as I'm going through, um, uh, these are they call these apostles, and they're all flats. These are um, uh, uh, horn. This is actually ebony. Okay. But, uh, uh, there's there's black horn. Um, uh, they would just turn the cylinders and then put loops and stuff on them, and then they would turn that either out of ebony or black horn. It had to all be black and match. I don't know why. But... Now, were those hollow to store? Yeah. Okay. Now, this this pouch has loops on the back, so it'll sit on, on a belt. Okay. And each one is a shot, and you can see how they, they took this out. But this is ivory. Wow. Yeah. So... These are all decorated with mosaics. Nobody engraved those. And you can make those out of horn so easily. If you're yeah. yeah. So you can so. chalk that up on your lathe and, oh, yeah. and just go. Easily. Yeah, I mean, I've turned it between centers even, you know, and then yeah. at the bottom. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, there's, I, I probably have more in here somewhere, but, uh, you know, there's, I, I, I tell them, I said, yeah, give me a day, I'll find it, I'll yeah. find a, a, you know, a reference for it, or, or how they did something, and, uh, there's so much, and they were uh, so industrious I mean, with what they this had. Flask, they made thousands of these, now there's one in there somewhere. Now, is that leather? No, that's wood. That's wood. Yeah, and it's, it's not in one, they don't, they don't hollow it out, they actually, um, uh, cut a beam. And they cut the sections into that size, and then they they um, hollow the centers out. They just go right down the line and take all the centers out, huh. and then put them back together. And uh, these there's there's actually supposed to be two more down here. That's why that leather's on. Um, but uh, those clips are what hold the whole thing together. Okay. And then what they do is they just seal the seam up when they put the top and bottom. They seal the whole thing all the way around. And then all they do is put a. But it was a, a, the simplest way to make a couple thousand flasks to outfit a bunch of mercenaries. Right. Yeah. And if you lose them, you're not out, you know, uh, hours and hours of, of endeavor. Right. Uh, so that's, you, you'll see a bunch of them show up. The, the, you know, uh, I've actually been to a show where there's one on every table because they were that simple yeah. to get. Now they're hard to get because people are buying them. Oh, yeah. And then when you go to, uh, I don't know if I have that, that picture. There's a, a photo of uh, uh, an armory in Scandinavia. Um, when they when they reclaimed their uh, flat powder horns, um, they had so many of them. They, all they did was they drilled a hole through them and nailed them to the walls for decoration. Right. They're, I mean, it, we're talking the whole museum. The walls were completely full of powder flasks because they, they took all the soldiers' flasks and, and they moved on to another way of right. their weapon. But uh, it, it it's unbelievable. It's here. hard to imagine that scale. Here. And those aren't these aren't the cheap flasks. These are the the actual uh, uh, the metal uh, uh, three part uh, charging 
they have a, a, a little corkscrew in them that turns and closes the hole so that no potter will go into the the, the, the flute. And uh, the flutes are pretty much a powder measurement themselves. So they would open that up, tilt the flask forward and close it. And then all they would do is put it over the gun and open the flask and it, it would go. It was like 60 or 70 grains of powder. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, I mean, this is the the, the phases of you know these are right. the early cartridge boxes, and if you look, each one of them has an open enclosure, and this is the the um, That's pop the measure. measure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's and here here you have cartridge uh, um, for pistols, cartridge boxes for pistols. Huh. Yeah, and those attach to your either on a cord or on your belt. Okay. Oh yeah, and even up until the uh, um, 1800s. Um, guys carried those uh, uh, in their pockets or on a, on a loop uh, while they traveled on stagecoaches and things like that. But they just carried a pistol. Right. Yeah. And there would be up to uh, six cartridges. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I moved so many things around. There's one of the fancier ones. And that one oh, has wow. uh, five cartridges. Yeah. yeah, and it's spring loaded. So. so it can just pop right open. Oh, yeah. But I don't know why they put that big flange on. Yeah. There's no reason. I mean, that would just be cumbersome. But I, I, they probably did it so that you can set it on a counter and put the... Yeah, to load it safely. Huh. Yeah, you'd think wearing that with that flange would catch on everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, you know, um, um, if they actually use those, some, some of them, I don't think they were ever used. Yeah. You know, some of the guys said, you know, uh, if I go on a trip, well, hell, they had half a dozen guys with them and had guns anyway. Yeah. They, oh, they carry a knife or a sword. Yeah. yeah. It may have been just kind of an emergency. Oh, yeah. But here, these these all have, here's a primer flask and there's a big flask under the butt of the gun. And then, come on. And then there's a small flask, large flask. So they, they carried a primer and they carried it. Yeah. That's right. Uh, but you never see any of the tiny ones. Right. That's what I, that's what's interesting about Carl's presentation is, we, I mean, people now carry these small priming flasks. Yeah, yeah, and, and they had them, but uh, what did they turn into? And we have, we found containers um, that I know are for primer powder, but um, they're full of salt and pepper. I'm serious. 